My life before diabetes was like anyone else's. Look, uh, country boy coming from Mildura. I was lucky enough to be picked up by the Richmond Footy Club as a 17 year old to come down and try out with the uh, Richmond under 19s. Played uh, a year there, then uh, started my senior career at Richmond in 1978. And leading up to that, I'd played in a premiership in 1980, won the best first year player, played a couple of games for Victoria, and I was flying. Then the end of 1983, when I was about 23, that's when I got diagnosed that I was a diabetic. So really it was a, a normal life, going along swimmingly, everything was flowing away, and uh, I suppose that was virtually it. I was studying, um, doing a degree that I didn't really like, but I didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, so I didn't want to quit without having something else to do. So um, just really studying and putting my all into that. Um, and then got diagnosed about a week after my 21st birthday. I first experienced it with gestational diabetes. So that was for three months and I had to go on insulin for three months. And then I had a, another blood test after that, six weeks after I had the child and it came up um, negative and I was really excited and I was happy um, that I didn't have to deal with the diabetes anymore. They just said that I had to look after my lifestyle and make sure that I maintain healthy weight and, and eating and, and I was always like that anyway. Um, and then a year on January 2003 woke up, was feeling a bit thirsty and the increased thirst just was insatiable. And, um, and a very dry mouth as well, it was really dry. Um, probably took me about two and a half weeks until I really said to myself, there's something really wrong. I mentioned it to a friend uh, who was an, a nurse. I said, oh, you know, I've been thirsty and going to the toilet a lot and, and losing weight. And, um, and, and, and I, I sort of had a feeling I had diabetes because uh, at that time there was the Atkins diet going around and, I mean, and uh, you had to buy these strips to see if you're in ketoacidosis with, um, that, that's how you start, how you lose the weight with Atkins and, and I did that and um, a, a test and um, it had the sugar test as well and, and the sugar one changed. And I thought, oh gee, that's strange. So I sort of, I said this with this in mind to the, my friend who was a, a nurse and she said, well, you should go to the doctor and um, have a test. So I went along to the country doctor and I said, oh, I want to be tested for diabetes. And he looked at me, you know, you've got a hypochondriac here. Anyway, <laughs> so he did the test and um, he said, oh yes, you'll have to go and have a, a glucose tolerance test, which is the the definitive test if you've got diabetes and uh, so it all just developed from there. I remember when I was at school um, in the in junior school there was a young boy had diabetes and I thought he had the worst life ever and then and I was quite normal like it, it never struck me that I would be in that situation or anything and then we got into high school and it hit me all of a sudden. I was 14 going on 15 and of course I was just interested in boys. I wasn't even interested in school. So it was a huge shock. About a month before I was diagnosed with type 1, my, uh, my father actually went through and had a kidney stone and was diagnosed with type 2. So there were a couple of similarities that my mother noticed between uh, my father's uh, sort of telltale signs and uh, then a couple of them started appearing in, in me and uh, alarm bells started ringing but nothing was ever done about it. Um, at that age I was quite active in, uh, in playing field hockey, uh, had a fantastic game, came off the field and collapsed. Um, very out of character, very out of sorts, taken straight to the doctors, uh, my mum straight away mentioned uh, a couple of the symptoms blood test, off the charts, off to hospital you go. Um, so that was, the, that was the diagnosis. I didn't understand the implication of it. I just thought it was something that you got, you took a medication for a while and you got over it. I didn't realise at that stage that it was going to be forever. 
I think knowing that I would have to be on insulin for a long time, that was a lifetime, and then you just went, well, yeah, that, that's, it's, it's not going to go away, it's, it's there, so I was just probably a little bit, just that initial cry, that was all, I think, that's, it was probably just a relief. I did have a little bit of an understanding of, of what diabetes was because my father had just been diagnosed with type 2. Um, even still, there was a little bit of a confusion surrounding, sure, my, my father had a bit of an unhealthy lifestyle. I was the polar opposite, young, fit, healthy, very active. How could this affect me? Why was it affecting me? A lot of questions and not a lot of answers. And uh, everything happened pretty quickly. I was very poorly controlled to start with and was taken back into hospital a couple of times to get back on track. And actually one of the nursing sisters at the hospital explained it more to me um, and really put it into words that I could understand and showed me an awful lot. And I think that was the turning point. It was probably 18 months to two years down the track. And that was probably a turning point for me where I realised that I did have to concentrate on it, I did have to work with it. Um, I didn't need for it to rule my life, but I always had to consider it. 